Hey everyone, it's Desiree. We are going to make some master boards today. Um, need to cleanse just a little bit. And I've got lots of journals lined up. So I love master boards to create, I can use them to create anything. Pockets, tags, tucks, paper clips, uh, tabs coming off of pages, uh, cover backgrounds, um, all kinds of things. So we're just going to do some mishmash. Now I know the journals that I'm putting together, I have an idea of the colors, but I do like to keep, uh, no matter what type of journal it is, uh, nine out of ten and I'm gonna say that because there's one that's wow it's it's really different um, but absolutely love it um, where I do like to have that vintage feel those browns and blacks and just dark colors um, or bright colors that have been vintage photoed that's the best way I can say it and this is what we're going to do this is scraps um, of pattern paper, dictionary pages, music pages, um, some coffee dyed. This is packaging um, that we get. I love keeping this stuff. Um, pretty soon it's going to take over a shelf probably. Um, inks, we're going to stamp, we're going to splatter, we're going to have all kinds of fun with these pages. Now this here is one of those 12 by 12s that you're just not going to use. This is one that, you know, from a paper pad or a pack of pattern paper that I got and I just didn't a either use it in the project that I completed uh, for somebody or for a gift, but it makes a great base for a master board. The other thing that makes a great base for the master board that I usually use are uh, magazines. Uh, there's a couple magazines that I'll get every once in a while. I love paging through them. And again, not subscribed to it, but I'll take those pages out and that will become my base because it's thin and I can add it to something thick or I can turn it into an envelope because it is thin. These are going to be pretty thick, um, which is great. I love the fact that it's double sided so I can cut this down into anything that I want. All right, so let me get that off to the side and let me grab another one so I hope you guys grab your supplies your scraps have some fun grab a piece of anything whether it's an eight and a half by 11 whatever size it is grab your scraps pattern papers anything like that and grab some glue I'm gonna be using my Uhu glue sticks and I'm also gonna be using liquid glue. I've grabbed a few washi tapes. I do like to use liquid glue on those as well to make sure that they're down. Of course, my vintage photos coming in. I have white acrylic paint. Uh, I have a water bottle so that I can water them down. I have some scraps here. I grabbed a couple bags of those. I've got some scrap digital prints and pages and dictionary pages. Um, you can just see like even my cutoffs from digitals. I keep those as well, mainly because they're coffee dyed and I love the coffee dyed. I have bigger sheets as well that I wasn't using so they can go in the background or I can use the other side. It doesn't matter that there's a grid on it. I've um, got some music sheets, all kinds of stuff. The packaging paper that I'm talking about is, dun, 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 is this stuff right here. So usually like um, sometimes you'll get that brown paper <clears throat> and it's crumbled up so that your items don't shift in your box. And if you look, it's perforated. That's what this is. Um, and this, this stuff is just great. I'm actually going to show you another use for it 
in this video uh, when it comes to that stuff there, but I just absolutely love it. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be using. I am going to be using my Stampers Anonymous Field Notes stamp set. You can see I've got some pulled already um, to just stamp all over the place and have some fun with. Might add another one. And then I also grabbed my background um, script stamp. This is also from Stampers Anonymous, and I have no idea what it's called. But you could see it's from the Wendy. Um, Wendy, is that Betchy? I'm probably wrong. Um, and then I'll be using archival inks. Potting soil for the brown and jet black. Um, for that because I am going to be, you know, spritzing it. So here's the 12 by 12. I'm not going to cut off this strip. I'm going to keep that in there. And then here's our back. This is a perfect background for it. And it's, it's heavyweight. This is from a uh, baking cooking album that I had made from my sister. And I just have a few of those pieces left. What's wonderful... Again, you're just going to grab scraps. It doesn't matter what size they are. What's great, because we have this, you can leave some of this that shines through. You don't have to cover everything up. Like, I can go around that A. What I do like to do, though, is have some torn edges for the most part. Um, when it comes to it and some of these pieces, I just let them pile up in front of me um, and then I'll see if I will use them. As I said, I am going to be using my glue stick and I don't need another page because if the glue gets on this, it's okay. We're going to cover it up and we're just going to have some fun covering up our page. It's okay if we go off to the side. We can trim that down. I'm not too worried about colors right now. I just want bold and vibrant prints um, to come through. It's very random. Very random. So they can be digitals. Um, but I have here lots of pattern paper as you can hear me crinkle crinkling through it so master boards are great on many levels at least for me um, mass creating a master board is almost like doing uh, ink smushed backgrounds or doing, a, you know, taking a paper pad and just breaking it down. For me, it kind of like clears my head to say, okay, what do we want to create? Because there's no thought process. It, it helps me to not think and to just go with the flow. You can see you don't need fancy materials. Um, you can use, you know, a, a tear roller if you want. I mean, and I literally, I have that right here. Sometimes I'll pull that in. And if you don't have that, you can certainly use just a regular roller um, to tear along that. You don't have to have anything specific. But you're just taking your pieces and you're building. You're just building along these edges and filling up. Now, what I like to do, usually what I do with a master board, once it's done, is I'll set it aside. Or if I know that I've made this for a specific project, 
I will um, put it with the project. And then as I'm creating that, I can look to say, okay, I'm going to cut this down for a tag. Or I'm going to turn it into a tuck spot because you can cut this down to any size that you need. So since this is pretty much 12 by 12, if you're, if you want to create large tags, you can, you can get, if you cut them three inches wide and six inches tall, you're going to get eight tags from this one page, which is huge. That's a lot of tags. A lot, a lot. And sometimes I'll just put a piece in the center and then I'll come around it. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Hmm. Okay. I like that one better. Um, if I'm creating, you know, those tucks or a pocket, you can make them strips. These I also love. So tags is the first thing that I like to use master boards for. Um, the second thing are belly bands. They are great for a belly band. Mm hmm A belly band base. Um, I'm looking for, here it is. And then you can put, you know, your, your focal point on it and it, you can get a lot of belly bands from this. Again, create short ones, cut it at six inches, and then, you know, just make, even if you just made them two inches wide, you're going to get six going across. So that's 12 belly bands. Because again, the way that you decorate or put your focal image on top, each one will be very different. And that's the beauty of a master board. That's loud. Um, you know, no two will ever be alike. And you can continue to collage on top of them uh, when it comes to the different things that you want to put on your master board. So I'm just having fun placing the pieces. I'm not inking around the pieces. When it comes to master boards, I usually, I do not ink around each piece because there's going to be so much I because I'm going to be stamping I'm going to be splattering I'm going to be you know using this here I, I keep this because it's plastic and I can get that in my ink and just keep dabbing that around um, so I don't need to ink here's this one and it, it's these make great pages too in your journals because listen I love that sound. Sorry if you did not. I know some people, I have to be, I always like to be careful with sounds. With something of this size, your pieces don't, I try not to go too big or too small, rather, um, because then you'd be doing your master board. We'd be doing this until midnight. <laughs> Not that that wouldn't be a problem. Um, and I love that paper too, because it gives it just a little, since it's wrinkly, a little bit of texture 
um, along that. I do, I like to work in three, so I have, I'll, I keep an eye, I've got one music sheet there, and I'll have two more in other areas. Just got to see where that's going to go and what that's going to look like. And you'll see that throughout. I'm just going to put that there. So you can see I'm keeping some of the, the paper in place. Let's get some more. And it's just fun. Now you don't have to, you know, glue each piece down as you're going. You can certainly um, lay your pieces out, then glue your pieces down. Here I'm just pulling out some scraps that I think are going to give the effect that I'm looking for like this this is something that I would put in afterwards so I do keep these small strips I think they add a lot to your piece So does that white strip. Oof. I like that side though. Mm. It's fun though, as you're digging through you know your pattern papers you can sit there and or okay so I'll sit here and say oh I remember I used this when I was making this piece so I think that's that to me is fun and for those of you you know I love to tear paper Don't know why. And I just keep crossing them over. And again, you can use um, any type of glue you want. I just find it's easier with the glue stick to use that to put all these pieces down. Remember to crisscross. Okay, now that's a fun print. You want your papers you know, I've got some going this way, I've got some going this way. And then that just helps to give you these different textures when it comes to your master board.
but I do like this print that's sitting all around there. And I like that A. What I also love about master boards is, you know, you, you look at this and you're like, okay, well, I want this here. And when you cut them up, you're going to get something completely, absolutely, completely different. So that's another reason why I love creating master boards. Just don't think. Just get your pieces down because it doesn't matter how they look when they're down. Because it's going to change. It's going to completely change the look. And they're great to use up your scraps. It's a great way. I really like that piece, but I think it's too close. that up there. You can also sew around your master board. I like to wait once my pieces are cut. Before I sew unless this is turning into a um, a cover then I'll sew it first before I get the journal together of course All right, which way do I want to go here? Uh, I think I'm still going to go that way. So I think it's coming along great. I want some more of that. And I just need one more piece. And I think I'm going to put that right there. So I've got my three pieces now of this. I have two of the music. That's going to go right, I'm not quite sure now, yeah, 
That's going to go right there. <clears throat> and then we just need one more down here. And don't worry about if your print is right side up or going the right way. Let it be random. Let it go. And now we've got that. So we've got all of that there. And I think it's great because this is part of the original um, pattern paper, this is, this is, that, this, this. So it just kind of all pulls together when you do that. Now what I like to do next, so if I pull in the other one, is I like to put these big splatters down and stamp and all of that. So let's do our stamping first. And I'm going to pull one of these in as well. Oh, let's do the washi tape first. Just going to put that there. So I've got some three washi tapes here. And I'm just going to cut some pieces. I do like to put liquid glue on these because they will peel up over time. This just kind of helps keep them down. And again, just having fun putting them in random spots, any length you want. Some washi tapes are stronger than others. And then I've got this one here that is horrendous to pull apart. But I love it. I absolutely love it. But it is, it is just so difficult. And I'm just going to place a few of these around. And you can see I'm always overlapping um, when it comes to these pieces. Now, if you want to create like a checkerboard style where everything's lined up, go for it. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's like the rules when we do anything. Have fun with it. There, there are no rules. Nobody says that this has to be this color or this has to be this. All right, so now we've got our washi tape down. I'm going to grab my stamps next. And the first one that I'm going to use is my background. So that's the next step that I do. And you can see this goes pretty quick. You know, get gather all your supplies, just gather them around 
and just have some fun. For my script, I always like to use my brown and I love the potting soil. And again, I'm using archival inks because I'm going to be adding water or splatters or something. And I don't want it to, I don't want the script to run. And this just very random second, third generations going on here. Not looking for perfect print. If I want it really heavy, I'll really press down. Get those frustrations out. But I do like to pretty much cover the back. You know, just get these colors down. And I think that looks great. And what I'm going to do, <clears throat> what I do with this, I always have one of these near me because now I'm going to take this. And this, I know this is going to make people cringe. This is pretty much how I clean the stamp to get all the ink off. So now that has a background. All right, so we're done with the brown. <clears throat> now I'm going to grab my black. And I know it's a horrible word, but it says condemned. And we're going to stamp this three times. Again, just having fun with the direction. We're going to bring this in as well. And we're going to stamp that a couple times. go and then I've got this pretty circle and this I always want to make sure that I'm going over like three different areas you know I'm really crossing over those papers and I'm turning it you know I want that to be turned I'm actually going to do this one five times and same thing I stamp it off on my scrap paper and then we got our small number. I like to put this in areas. It's all right. <laughs> we caught it. Like I did with the condemned, just putting it in areas where you'll see it. There we go. And then same thing. I love having this sheet here. It makes a great backdrop. And then our last one. Same thing. Again, just I'm looking for areas that are open. You know, not a, a dense cardstock but that can take the stamp and you'll still be able to see it I 
All right, so now we have our stamping done. And I think it looks really cool. I mean, the black really does come out. And this is great. I mean, great background. You can put this, um, you can make this a page in your journal. You can make a little book out of it. It could be a cover. You could just have a lot of fun with something like this. All right, so now the fun with our paints. So I'm gonna get a little bit more white down. And again, this is just a white acrylic. And I'm gonna grab my vintage photo and I'm gonna get some of that down. New pad. <laughs> gonna add some water. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use this. This is just a simple circle. This is out of the center of a tape roll that I keep. And now I've got something stuck on my hand. Here we go. Okay. And I'm just going to tap it in here and then blink, blink. I'm going to tap it in. Blink, blink. And I'm just letting it hit the page, I'm letting it slide, making sure that it's covered, coming off of that other circle. I know I'm shaking the camera, I'm sorry. But just letting that get around. Now, this would probably, the circle would be better if I scratch this up, but over time, it'll do that. And there we go, we've got that. And now, I'm gonna pick that up off my table. I'm gonna mix up our white. And we're just going to now splatter on top of this. Because even though it's for a journal, the white splatters are awesome. Add a little more water to that. Just let them be random. It's not a blizzard. It's maybe, you know, three to five inch of a snow, but it just adds that little bit to the background of the texture and I'm holding this up because I don't you know I'm splattering everything back there could have big drips little drips just let that go I'm gonna go into the vintage photo and add those around to and there you go and you can even do that with this piece here, you can have some fun just adding some splatters. Adding that. You can do that in white. Again, just let it skip around. And you've just got this great, great background. And again, it's like uh, when you do your jelly prints, you have that spare piece of paper that's off the side for your brayer. That's what you can do too when we're stamping um, like that. So there you go. That's how I do master boards. You could have stopped after the papers. Let it go. You didn't have to add the washi tape and the splatters and the ink and the stamping and all of that. And you can use any stamps. If you've got butterflies, you can use butterflies. If you have little snowmen, you can use little snowmen. Again, when you cut this up, you just don't know what that's going to look like. Now, I will, in the next video, I will show you these two same master boards 
and how I'm going to cut them up. What am I going to do with them? More than likely, they're going to become tag bases, and that's what we'll start with. But these usually will have pockets on them, or they'll have a pocket in behind, and that's what I'll show you in the next video. So I hope you had fun. I hope you grabbed your supplies and just tore paper with me. Um, again, use your scraps. Use what you have. It doesn't have to be pattern paper. It can be solid cardstock as well. Just have fun with all of those colors just coming in. Any color will go together. Remember, a rainbow's got all of them. So keep that in mind. You can put all the colors on there. You don't have to have a warm theme or a cool theme. But if that's what you're looking for, then by all means, do it and enjoy. All right. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below. Make sure you subscribe. Love to have you here. Hit that thumbs up. Make sure you ring the bell. Hopefully you'll be notified. You never know. You just never know. But most of all, remember, enjoy this process. Have fun with it. Don't stress. Don't get frustrated. And if you're doing that, just take a minute and walk away. Get some air. But come back to it and enjoy the art that you are creating. I know it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it's yours and it's unique to you. Remember what's most important though for me. Always guys, keep being creative every day in everything that you do. And I will talk to you in the next one. Till then.